trouble in thy sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church has put these words in our mouths today, beloved. The whole world is in your power. O Lord, King Almighty, no one can gainsay you, for you have made heaven and earth. You are Lord of all. This is what we confess in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. We say we believe this. You just heard again today the account of the creation. And after each day of creation, the Lord God said, He spoke into existence everything that was made. And it was so, we read time and time again. When God speaks, it is so. Because the whole world is in his power. The Lord is the King Almighty and no one can gainsay him. For he has made heaven and earth. He is the Lord. He alone has power to create. He alone has power to destroy. And by his word, he has revealed this to us. By his word, you have heard. By his word, he has created faith in your hearts. But what do we do with his holy word? We have heard again, as I said, the account of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Well, that's very nice, we think. But the world has a different accounting, doesn't it? The world doesn't hold to this. So-called settled science doesn't hold to this. How can it? After all, when we see so many Supposed evidences pointing to the world being millions, if not billions, of years old. And yet, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we believe. Because it is the word of God, which is the power of salvation to all who believe. It is the word of God. We may not pick and choose which parts of God's word we accept. We may not pick and choose what fits us today, what will fit for us tomorrow. We see how the world, how specifically the church, has fallen into such disrepair by this mindset that we may pick and choose what is the Word of God and what is not the Word of God. You see what terrible heresy the church has found herself in by this course of accepting parts of God's word and denying other parts. And so we pray in the collect of the day, O Lord, keep your household, the church, in continual godliness that through your protection she may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve you in good works. Well, how can the household of God's church be kept in continual godliness if the household of God's church rejects the very word of God upon which she stands. How can we Christians combat our enemies? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. How can we fight against these enemies which desire nothing but our death and suffering and torment? How can we fight against these enemies who want to take our children from us, who want to separate God's household of faith? How can we fight against these things if we take the weapon, the very power of God for life and salvation, His holy word, and reject it. How can we stand? How can we put on 
the whole armor of God, which is bound up in his eternal, unchanging word, if we deny that eternal, unchanging word. For what is the whole armor of God? Having fastened on the belt of truth and put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel and peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. All of these things you see are bound up with the word of God. The belt of truth. What is the truth, Pontius Pilate asked. Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. Jesus Christ is the word of God who was with God in the beginning by whom all things were made apart from whom nothing was made. How can you fasten on the belt of truth when you reject parts of God's holy word? How can you take the breastplate of righteousness, that righteousness which is not your own, that righteousness which is Christ, that righteousness which is God's, if you reject the word of God? You see what a disadvantage the church today finds herself in when we pick and choose that which is amenable to the world that which makes the world happy from God's word and reject that which condemns the world, that which condemns our own sinful flesh. Beloved in Christ, your Lord and Savior, Jesus, has given you all. You must take it all. You can't have him in parts. You can't have a little bit of Jesus, a little bit of Buddha, perhaps a little bit of Gandhi or any other philosophy of the world, you can't mix it. Your good Lord Jesus Christ has given you all that you may have life and salvation. Your Lord Jesus Christ has not held back even a scrap, but he fills your cup to overflowing. You remember in the miracles of the feeding of the great multitudes? In both of these cases, with just a little, the Lord Jesus Christ provided so abundantly as to have leftovers that were far exceeding anything his apostles could have possibly imagined. And so your good Lord Jesus Christ comes to you this day by his word, the same word that spoke everything into creation by his word, and it was so. Your good Lord Jesus Christ comes to you this day calling you his own child by his word, and it was so. Your good Lord Jesus Christ comes to you to this day, forgiving you your sins, and it was so. Your good Lord Jesus Christ comes to you from this altar this day, and by that eternal, unchanging word, he gives you not merely bread and wine, but his own precious body in his own life-giving blood. And it was so, because he has spoken it. And so, when this man went to Jesus, seeking a miracle from our Lord Jesus Christ, when this official came to Jesus, saying, Sir, come down before my child dies, and Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. Do you suppose the man thought that this was a little bit dismissive? After all, he wanted Jesus to come to him. But Jesus taught this man and his whole household. And Jesus has taught you and the whole household of his church that where his word is, it is so. Because Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Jesus is God Almighty. The whole world is in your power, O Lord, King Almighty. No one can gainsay you, for you have made heaven and earth. You are Lord of all. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. So when our 
good Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaks, we listen. For we are his sheep. And we recognize the shepherd's voice. When our good Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaks, he accomplishes something for you. It is so. This day, beloved, you came into this church as you truly are. None of you came in here by your own reason or strength. None of you came in here by your own righteousness. You all came, every one of you, filthy with your sins, clothed in your unrighteousness. I don't know what thoughts were going on in your mind, but I can tell you the thoughts that go on in my mind on a quite regular basis. They're thoughts of distraction. There are many other things that I'm thinking about other than the fact that God Almighty comes to this place. I'm distracted by petty grievances. I'm distracted by silly nonsense. I'm distracted by thoughts of what was and thoughts of what is to come. I'm distracted by all of these things. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ continues to come speaking his life-giving word. And it is so. Confirms his promises. And just as this official's son was healed by the promise of Christ's word, and it was so, Christ Jesus has confirmed the promise he made and fulfilled on the cross for you this day. You walk up to this altar by the baptismal font where your unrighteousness was washed away and the righteousness of Christ was placed upon you. And it was so. Do not disbelieve, but believe, for Christ is true. You come to this altar and receive those gifts that Christ freely gives, and it was so. Do not disbelieve, but believe. You and all the household of Christ's church. For Christ keeps his household, the church, in continual godliness by his eternal, unchanging word, by this truth. And so, beloved, we must continue to stand firmly, not on our own wants and desires, not on what the world tells us is good, right, and salutary. We must continue to stand firmly upon the unchanging, eternal word of Jesus Christ, Believing by faith that what he has revealed is so. For if it's not, then all is foolishness. If Christ is a liar, then we are dying. But it is so. He is the way and the truth and the life. And even now, he is leading you, his dear household, his dear church, through the valley of shadow, the shadow of death to eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.